In this video, I'll be creating a provisioning package to prepare Windows computer without any user interaction. I'm starting this video from a GitHub page and that's because there are a few bits of information here that I will be using for this video. And I will leave the URL in the description down below. And here you can see all the actions that will be performed by the provisioning process. There will be two stages. The first one will be performed by the provisioning package itself. And the second one will be performed by a provisioning script after the provisioning process for the provisioning package is over. And here you can see all the actions that will be performed by the provisioning package. It will skip out of the box experience. Also, it will offline install Chocolatey. After that, it will execute a PowerShell script called set to PS1. And this set to PS1 script will disable the privacy experience, create a local admin account without a password, disable sleep on AC, copy all the configuration scripts from the provisioning package to the computer, and also it will set up run once to execute the provisioning PS1 script after admin user logon. And this step right here is very important because this will configure the second stage to be executed after a successful admin user logon. And then we have the second stage and here you can see all the actions that will be performed by the second stage. And the second stage will start by running software configuration scripts. Like you see here, we have a configuration script for Brave, Google Chrome, Edge, and also Firefox. And after that, it will run Windows updates and it will run Windows updates multiple times. For example, if it finds Windows updates, installs them, and then the reboot is necessary, it will restart the computer and run Windows updates again. And after that, it will use Chocolatey to install software packages. I will be installing Google Chrome and Firefox from the community repository. And also I will be installing a Brave package that I made myself. And for this step, I will be using my USB drive that will contain the provisioning package as my chocolate repository. And in the end, it will allow us to perform few manual actions, like creating another local admin account, changing the computer name, and also rebooting the computer. And that's all the actions that this provisioning package will perform. Now let me know in the comments down below if you want me to include more configurations, more settings or to change the provisioning process entirely. And now I will start downloading all the necessary files for this package and I will start with the chocolate installation file. And for that I will use the link that I have here that brings me to the chocolatey github page. Here I will click on the release and this brings us to the download page and here I will be downloading the chocolatey msi file. I will click on it and the download should start then I will go back to my github page. And now we can start downloading all the scripts that will be used for this provisioning package. The first one is the set to PS1 that I have here. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple PowerShell script. Here I'm creating a local admin account. After that, I'm creating a provisioning folder on the client computer. Then I'm moving almost all of the scripts from the provisioning package to the client computer. And here I'm creating few registry entries. The first one is or the second one is to disable the privacy experience. This allows us to go from the out of the box experience to admin's desktop without any user interaction. And the second registry entry is to configure run once to execute provisioning PS1 script. And this is very important because provisioning PS1 script is responsible for configuring software, installing software, and performing Windows updates. And in the end, I'm also configuring few power settings, as you can see here. One thing to understand that this script right here will be executed inside of the provisioning package and the second script provisioning PS1 will be executed after the provisioning process for the provisioning package is over and after a successful local administrator sign in. Anyways, now I will click on the button right here to download the script and then I will go back to the page and here the second script that I will be downloading is the provisioning PS1. I will click on it and as you can see it's another PowerShell script. And this script is a bit more complicated. As you can see here, we have a single parameter that allows us to know if the script is running for the first time or for the second time. And that's important because on the first time, we'll be performing way more actions than on the second time. For example, here you can see that on the first time, we'll be executing all the scripts that are here. And all the scripts here are for the software configuration. Here we have the brief configuration script from Edge and also Firefox. And after running all the software configuration scripts, the script will wait for internet connection. 
And that's because the second step is to update Windows and also install software using Chocolatey. And for both of those actions, we need internet connection. After detecting the internet connection, it will install PS Windows Update overshell module and also all the prerequisites to install the module. And after installing the module, it will check for Windows updates and install all the available updates. And after installing the updates, it will check if a restart is required for the computer. And if the restart is required, it will set up run once once again to execute the same script. And then it will restart the computer. And after the restart, this script will execute once again, but this time it will not perform any actions that are for the first run. And once again, it will check for updates, install the updates, and also restart the computer if another restart is necessary after updating the computer for the second time. And if the restart is not required, the software installation stage starts right here. And here you can see a list of packages that I will be installing. I will be installing Firefox, Google Chrome, and also Brave. And notice here, we need to specify source if we are using the community repository or we're using the USB drive as a repository. As you can see here, I'm installing Firefox and Chrome from the community repository, and I'm only installing Brave from my USB drive. And after installing all the software, we have the menu right here. And like I said, this snippet right here is to perform a few manual actions. It will give us a menu in the command line. It will allow us to select if we want to create a local admin account, change the computer name, or restart the computer. And these are only an optional steps that you can perform if you need to. Anyways, now I'll click on the button right here to download the script. And once again, I will go back to my GitHub page because there are a few more scripts that we need to download. So the second one will be the Brave configuration file. And as you can see, it's also a PowerShell script. And this one is pretty simple because I'm only creating registry entries in Windows registry. And it's to disable the features that are unnecessary for me. For example, Brave Rewards, Brave VPN, Brave Wallet, and also Tor. And all of the configuration scripts will be the same, so I will not go into details on what settings I'm performing. And if you want more details about the configuration, or if you want to add more settings or modify this snippet, I recommend that you go back to my GitHub page, scroll down a bit, and here you can find a lot of my videos that are related to this package. Basically, all the videos that you see here in the list are like small configuration pieces for this package. For example, here you can find the video about installing the configuration designer. Here we have a video about creating the Brave Browser chocolatey package. And if you are interested in creating your own chocolatey packages, there is a playlist about creating chocolatey packages here. Also here you can find links to my video playlists for Firefox settings, Brave Browser settings, Microsoft Edge settings, and also Google Chrome settings. And here you will be able to find more settings than I'm using in this video. Anyways, now let's continue with this video by downloading the Brave configuration script. Once again, I will click the button right here, go back to my GitHub page, and let's click on the Chrome, Edge, and Firefox scripts, because like I said, all of them are very similar. I will click on the button to download the Chrome configuration script, then let's download Edge configuration script, and the last one is the Firefox one. And after we have all the files, we can go to the downloads folder. And here now we have all the necessary files for the package. And as you can see here, I already have the Brave chocolatey package inside of my downloads folder because I will not be creating it in this video. And I'm using my own Brave browser package because I don't like the one that is located in the community repository because that one has updates issue. Anyways, now I can start creating my package and for that I will go to my Windows configuration designer. Here I will click on file, new package. I will name the package package. Then let's click next, next. Here I will select all Windows desktop editions and click next again and finish. Now let's expand the runtime settings. Let's first uh, skip out of the box experience. And for that, I will expand Ubi, select desktop. And for height Ubi, I will select true. After that, let's configure the chocolate installation. And for that, let's go to provisioning commands, primary context, and click on the command. Here I will name the command install chocolatey. Then let's click add. Let's click on the command here. 
Here we need to provide the command line and also the installation file. For the command line, I will go to my GitHub page and here I have the command line that I will be using to install Chocolaty. I will select it, right click it and copy it. Go back to the configuration designer and insert the command here. For the command file, I will click browse. Then I will go to my downloads folder and select the installation file for Chocolaty. As you can see, the installation location appeared here. And now let's configure everything else. For that, I will go to device context. I will click on the device context. Here we need to provide the command line. For that, once again, I will go to my GitHub page. And here I will copy this line right here. And as you can see, in this line, I'm executing set to PS1 script. And this is the only script that will be executed from the provisioning package. And I will click on the button right here to copy the line, go back to the configuration designer and insert the line here. Now we need to add all the scripts to the provisioning package. For that, I will click on command files, browse. I will go to my downloads folder. And here I will select all the scripts that we have here. I will only leave chocolatey installation file and brave uh, chocolatey package unselected. All other PS1 scripts are selected. Then I will click on open and then I will click on the button add right here. And as you can see, all the scripts appeared here. And like I said, from the provisioning package, only the set of PS1 script will be executed. And that's it for configuring the provisioning package. Now let's create it. And for that, I will click on export provisioning package. Here I will select next, 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 and build. Now let's select the output location that we see here. And here we have all the project files and also the package itself that you see here. The extension is ppkg. So I will right click on the package, I will copy it and I will move the package to my USB drive. And because I will be using my USB drive as my chocolate repository, I will create a folder here. I will name it Choco. I will go inside of it. Then I will go to my downloads folder. I will copy the Brave chocolatey package. I will go back to my USB drive and insert the package here. Also, one thing that I forgot to mention that if you're using your USB drive as your chocolatey repository, the USB drive name that you see here will be important. And that's because the provisioning script will look for this name that you see here. It's called USB drive. And if you want to change the name inside of the script, you can go to the provisioning PS1 script. Let me see where it is. It's this one right here. And as you can see here, we have a variable where we need to enter the USB drive name. So in my case, it's USB drive, just as the name that you see here. And that means that if you're trying to install your own packages, make sure that the name in the script right here matches the name that you see here. And that's it. Now we can use this USB drive to provision Windows 10 and Windows 11 computers without any user interaction. And for that, I will go to my Vember workstation where I have this Windows virtual machine. And as you can see, it is in the out of the box experience. And to trigger the provisioning process on this virtual machine, I need to connect the USB drive from my computer to this virtual machine. And in the real world, that would be plugging in the USB drive to the computer. And to connect the USB drive, I will go to VM, removable devices, select my USB drive and select connect. And now we need to wait and see what's going to happen. As you can see, the provisioning process has started. And here you can see that the computer went from out of the box experience to admin user's desktop without any user interaction. And it even started updating Windows. And after installing the first batch of Windows updates, the script is rebooting the computer. And after the reboot, the provisioning script is executed once again. And as you can see, it found another update. And this time the update didn't require a reboot, so it started the software installation stage.
and the provisioning process is over now we can see this menu right here where we can create a local admin account change the computer name and restart the computer or close the script now let's create a local admin account i will enter one press enter here we have this pop-up here i will provide the username i will name it local admin give it a password then i will click ok once again the action was performed but we also get another menu right here now let's change the computer name i will enter two and press enter for the computer name i will enter pc01 and as you can see here we have the warning message saying that for the changes to take effect we need to restart the computer so let's enter three and press enter and let's wait a bit for the restart to finish and as you can see after this restart the provisioning script is not executed anymore now let's check all the settings first let's open the command line if i type hostname we can see that the computer name now is pc01 let's also open mmc console i will go to file add and remove snapping then i will search for local users and groups click add here finish and ok and if i go to users we can see that we have the local admin account here and as you can see also brave appeared here and that's because my chocolatey package does not install brave directly but it installs it with the active setup that means that after installing the package we needed to sign out and sign back in or restart the computer now let's see if the software configuration was successful i will open brave and as you can see all the unnecessary features that would be here are disabled we can skip here and skip that and skip this but anyways as you can see all the wallets all the brave rewards are disabled now if i open chrome well we didn't make many changes to chrome but one change that i made is that it disabled the pop-up that is unnecessary hard to close and also it installed the uBlock origin extension right here and that's all for the chrome browser if i open firefox it also looks clean all the unnecessary stuff disabled we have this clean starting page and also uBlock origin extension is installed and the last one is microsoft edge once again the browser looks clean we have all the unnecessary stuff once again disabled no sidebar and no other unnecessary features right here and that's basically it i think the provisioning package executed successfully and that means that this video is over like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and see you in the next one